Arachnophobia, or the fear of spiders, is arguably among the most common phobias. But a close look at these oft-maligned eight-legged creatures reveals a hidden world of awe-inspiring adaptations. I'm Matthew Hardcastle, and in this episode of Science Sessions, we'll be exploring the hunting adaptations of spiders, which go far beyond merely weaving webs. Cobwebs might make for spooky Halloween decorations, but these arachnids can be just as fascinating as they are frightful. Some spiders wait to snare unwitting prey that wander into their webs, while others deploy a host of strategies to actively hunt prey. In particular, orb-weaving spiders build some of the most iconic webs, but these structures may be used for more than snaring prey. Ronald Miles, a mechanical engineer at Binghamton University, New York, documented the ability of orb-weaving spiders to listen with their webs. What we have is an anechoic chamber. There are no acoustic echoes in that space. The walls are with fiberglass wedges, and it's also designed to be extremely quiet. We had the spiders with a spider web at a location that was three meters from the loudspeaker. We also had a laser vibrometer, which is able to measure the vibration of very tiny things like spider silk. And you could point the laser at the silk and measure its motion in response to the sound wave. We're able to make measurements at over a thousand locations on the surface of the spider web. When you play the sound, the spiders would react. Sometimes they would raise their front legs, or sometimes they would turn toward the sound. Sometimes they would go into a crouch position. When we play the sound, we could immediately see a reaction of the spider to the sound, which showed that the spider can hear it somehow. We measured the spider's web and found that, yeah, it does respond to sound quite well, and it's very likely that the spider can detect that. Orb webs are far from the only designs woven by spiders. Some spiders in the family Therididae use pre-stressed trap lines to snare and lift large prey off the ground. Nicola Pugno, a mechanical engineer at the University of Trento in Italy, explains how these spiders pull off this feat. With this mechanism, the spider can lift the weight in principle of any size. The mechanism is conceptually quite simple. The spider is attaching a silk thread starting from a ceiling, for example, from an anchorage to an object to be lifted. In this way, the spider attaches a thread that is pre-stressed by its own body weight. There is this silk thread that acts with a force that is comparable to the weight of the spider. If the spider repeats this procedure for a sufficient number of times, then the force is so large that you can lift the object, even if the weight is huge. This is why we observe some spider lifting lizards that are perhaps with a mass 10 or 100 times the body weight of the spider itself. When the prey is completely lifted, I think that there is also less ability by the prey to escape. Jay Staffstrom, a behavioral ecologist at Cornell University, describes how ogre-faced net-casting spiders can snatch prey out of the air. The net-casting spiders, they make this frame that's made of non-sticky silk. And then within that frame, they make a net of mechanically sticky, fluffy silk that they then grasp with their front legs. These spiders use vision to catch things off the ground. They'll strike forward with their web and they'll catapult their net on top of prey atoms walking beneath their frame. When these spiders are catching things out of the air, they're usually catching things that are actually behind them. When you visually occlude these spiders, they can still catch things out of the air quite easily. They use hearing to catch things out of the air. They'll do this little backflip where they'll sling their net upwards and they can catch mosquitoes and moths and things flying around them super quickly. As the name suggests, Australian ant slayer spiders survive by hunting ants. Alfonso Acevas, an ecologist at the Max Planck Institute for Chemical Ecology in Germany, breaks down the spider's aerial acrobatics. The first thing that they do is that they start setting up flat against the tree trunk. They also attach a very strong 
and adhesive line of silk. At the moment that the ant, unaware of the presence of the spider, comes nearby, the spider will do kind of a flip maneuver. That's when the silk line that they use comes into play. If at any point the silk line touches the ant, the very strong adhesive that the line is covered with will trap the ant. The spider keeps going down. It's out of the reach of any potential defense of the ants. While the ant is struggling to get free, it's also entangling more with the adhesive in the line. The jump with all of the acrobatic maneuver takes less than a second. The success rate was 85% capture success, which is extremely high. Some spiders hunt without using webs at all, including jumping spiders. This large group of spiders have evolved enhanced eyesight to help them stalk and pounce on prey. Beth Jacob and Alex Windsor, biologists at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, and their colleagues developed a specialized eye tracker to explore the sensory abilities of jumping spider eyes. Jacob and Windsor explain how the eye tracker works. If you look at the face of a jumping spider, you can see that there are four eyes that are forward facing. Two of them are the principal eyes, the high resolution movable eyes, and they overlap in a field of view with one of the pairs of secondary eyes. The secondary eyes are motion detecting and they actually are used to direct the principal eyes to things that come into the field of view. We've developed an eye tracker that is inspired by human eye trackers. Spider eyes are a little harder though, because it's not the outside of the eye that moves. It's a tube in the spider's head that moves around. The way we track the principal eye movements in jumping spiders is we tether them into the eye tracking ophthalmoscope. We can also give them a ball to hold onto, and it's sort of like a treadmill. Instead of just recording the surface of the eye like we do for humans, we found that infrared light, which is invisible to us and the spider, actually will penetrate through the spider's head and reflect off the retinas. At the same time that we're recording the retinal positions with the infrared light and camera, we are also projecting visible light images and the spider can essentially watch a movie while we track its retinas precisely. The retinas are boomerang shaped. The left and right principal eye each has its own retina. And when viewed through the eye tracker, it almost looks something like crosshairs. We're interested in how well the principal eyes track those moving discs and whether or not their ability to track the discs was affected by whether or not they had use of their secondary eyes. As soon as we painted over the secondary eyes, the principal eyes absolutely stopped tracking the discs. Some jumping spiders also possess color vision. Lisa Taylor, an entomologist at the University of Florida in Gainesville, studies the role of color in the prey preferences of jumping spiders. Color vision is very uncommon in spiders. Jumping spiders are unique. They have just really exceptional eyesight. There's over 6,000 species of jumping spiders, and they're all very different. We think that color vision has evolved independently at least three, probably more times across jumping spiders. We do a variety of things to understand the ways that these spiders use color in making decisions. One of the things we do is we manipulate the color patterns of prey, and then we present them to the spiders, and we see what the spiders do. Termites are just kind of whitish in color, so we can actually just take a small amount of enamel paint and put a little dot on their back of a different color. We just manipulate the color and then we ask the spiders what they prefer. Whenever given the choice, they always avoid reds, oranges, and yellows and tend more towards the blue or green or even like the brown or gray. Most of the other spiders that we've tested actually don't like red. In the animal kingdom among the prey that they encounter, red is a typical warning color. The eyes of jumping spiders are very different from humans and other mammals, but they have evolved many of the same capabilities. Daniela Rosler, a behavioral ecologist at the University of Constance and the Max Planck Institute for Animal Behavior in Germany, and her colleagues documented behaviors in jumping spiders that resemble rapid eye movement sleep, or REM sleep, a state associated with dreaming in humans. Rosler explains how she tracked the retinal tube movements of sleeping spiders and the potential implications of this finding. When we first started this research, the very first observation I made was an adult spider twitching and curling the legs while in this suspended resting position at night. 
And the twitching really reminded us of other sleeping animals. We realized that the juveniles, just when they hatch for about eight, nine days, they are completely translucent because the exoskeleton is not pigmented yet. You can really see the retinal tubes through the exoskeleton. We saw the exact same leg curling behaviors that we saw in the adults in regular intervals. 100% of the times where we had the retinal tubes in view, they would also move during those bouts of leg twitching or leg curling. So we really had a good hint at this being something like an active sleep state. We have to call it REM sleep-like state because we still have to demonstrate sleep in these spiders. Even in humans, being able to say that an organism is dreaming, you kind of have to ask <laughs> the organism. I do think that spiders offer an intriguing system to experimentally test some things like replay or the scanning hypothesis, which basically says that the eye movements during REM sleep are connected to the dream scene you're experiencing. Well, I really want it to be true for the spiders. It's just going to be very, very hard to prove. Spiders are among the oldest land animals, first appearing in the fossil record around 380 million years ago. These diverse arachnids have evolved a wealth of hunting adaptations, from weaving complex webs, to acrobatic maneuvers, to sophisticated eyesight. Spiders might evoke fear at first glance, but a growing body of research reveals that there is more to these eight-legged mascots of Halloween than meets the uninitiated eye. Thanks for tuning in to Science Sessions. If you like this episode, please consider leaving a review and helping us spread the word.